Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Legend Bex and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to install a standing stone or a monolith. Um, now the reason why I'm, in, I'm doing this I actually don't fully know. Um, for quite a few years now, a handful of years, I've had the feeling of having a standing stone in this, uh, in this very spot. Um, looking over the retreat centre, being part of the gardens, now, I don't know if you know about this, but um, there's a lot of ley line activity that runs through the property of the retreat centre. Uh, one ley line comes from um, Glastonbury area, it goes through the retreat, there's actually three ley lines that surround the property, and where many ley lines cross, they're called a ley centre. Now, there's lots of node points along the earth, just like our bodies have meridians and chakra points, so do the, the earth and other celestial bodies, etc. It's where everything uh, is connected and flowing and this is why the ancients, our ancestors possibly, um, who built very big structures around the world um, were to anchor in the uh, magnetic energies of the earth and the spiritual energies of the cosmos, anchoring in this uh, grounding uh, energy and they would have places of worship, um, druids, um, standing stones, um, pagans, for example, the really old ancient traditions. And then uh, Christianity came along and sometimes pulled down those standing stones or those structures and um, put a church, which was more of a more of a higher sp spiked sort of peak reaching the heavens. Um, so recently I've just come back from um, a Yeovil area um, near Martok, a place called Ham Hill, which is in Somerset. And it's abundant in uh, limestone there. So just come back with my uh, father. We had a look at um, a lovely standing stone. So currently about uh, seven foot tall, which is really good. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing at the moment. I have no clue. I looked on the internet how to install a standing stone. I had had no idea what was really there. So um, I guess you know I found the place uh, overlooking the retreat centre and the gardens and um, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing next. So I had to redo the uh, first part of the video because it was very very windy here so I had to redub so if it looks a bit of out of place don't worry. Um, so along the uh, on the ground here I've I basically put a a bamboo cane with some string and did a perfect circle on the ground and I started to dig uh, down and around. Uh, to create a really good uh, foundation for the standing stone. Um, again, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, all the uh, rubble that came out of the uh, ground has been placed uh, over there, which is probably about 20 or so wheelbarrow falls. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to make a good foundation first of all, on the, on the base of it, so I could get the, uh, the walls of it completely uh, correct. Um, this is a marker that I shall remove these now and then um, prepare the, the rest. Okay, now I've prepared this area with a giant uh, tarpaulin, weighted down the sides with uh, a load of debris and uh, bricks, etc. Cut out a hole where uh, this one will be pulled into so it doesn't damage the grass around and uh, I'll carry on with the pouring of the concrete pour for the base standing stone and also get rid of a lot of this uh, uh, rubble that we don't need as well. Okay, so this is a delivery day. Um, <clears throat> We've had a good heat wave here in Somerset and uh, for a good week or so, no, not much rain until the last few days. So the base has um, cured very, very well. Um, concrete, it's quite thick, it's probably about two feet thick. Doesn't probably need to be that much, but you know, I just never wanted the opportunity for it, to, the standing stone to sink. So on top of here, I have um, sieved a lot of uh, gravel into dust. I have to get finer, and then I used two um, meshes, which was a wide one and a very thin one, 
to create a bit more sand. The idea of that is when the standing stone comes to sit on, on here, it's not going to rock, it's going to find its way, hopefully. Um, I'm going to sprinkle some cement once the, uh, the uh, standing stone arrives. Um, and I'll put probably four or five inches of uh, concrete cement around the base. And then the rest I'm going to, um, so the, about that much around the base is going to be like cement, concrete. And then the rest finishing on top will be uh, soil and hopefully it will give a nice rustic sort of uh, old feeling to it rather than something modern. And uh, yeah, it should look nice here. This is all the mess obviously from tarpaulin keeping the grass. Well, I mean, we've had summer here, so the grass is non-existent. We've had a heat wave for a few, a few weeks, like 35 degrees. So um, what, you, what you don't know perhaps is that you can't kill grass. So um, there you go, it's going green over there. But yeah, this is the, uh, the base of the standing stone. Um, I'll keep you updated. So we just got to put in and uh, above us is a circle of uh, blue in the sky, or clouds, so <laughs> interesting, uh, yeah. Okay, so just about to um, concrete around, we can see these round things on the floor beneath the base put a little organite that I made years ago in Yeovil when I worked at um, Helicopter Place, Westlands and uh, yeah this, this stone comes from a very similar area so quite significant. should have some uh, grounding earth frequencies in there and I'll throw in a few more crystals as well so I'm gonna mix up the uh, cement now and uh, give it a good foundation. Also put in a few wedges in there, stone wedges. Um, not that it really needs it, but just helping it so it's not creating more of a wobble, which it doesn't. Put some um, sand in the base, give it a good footing. Um, so yeah, now it's, uh, it's good to go. Time to mix some uh, cement. Okay, so here's the almost finished product. Uh, standing stone is in the center and um, yeah, I've left about five and a half or six inches in places uh, to put soil around. That's not going to go anywhere. So I put enough wedges in. It's organite. It's got quite a flat base anyway, so the wind isn't going to put pull that over. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is just going to place some crystals around there. I don't know. Perhaps it might energise the place more and have a bit more grounding and purpose in here. So um, yeah, I'm very happy at the moment be nice when the grass is green and there's flowers coming up so I'm going to finish this off with um, soil in there with um, some flower bulbs um, so stuff that comes out in spring and summer so there'll be like uh, snowdrops and daffodils hopefully coming up um, but we'll see we'll see how that goes but I'll finish it off with some grass seed um, so it looks like it's been here for a long time so so it's currently sitting about six foot three maybe um, the height so because um, we're on a bit of a hill here overlooking uh, the retreat then um, you, you can see it much higher up and I'll see the windows up there when you look out you get to see a nice view of the standing stone 
So, um, yeah, very happy. Okay, so around the base of the uh, standing stone, I put some shungite, which uh, is a very earthing, grounding, and gets rid of uh, radiation and radio waves, etc. All around, and sandwiched in between some quartz as well. I'm not sure it's going to do much, but you know, I had them spare, so I wanted to try. The points are pointing away from the stone, so perhaps it will amplify and give some sort of energy off. Um, this is a lot of calcite on here, um, some crystals all on here. Um, millions of years old this, I think 165 million years old, piece of rock, Jurassic period. I believe that's the age, or 85 million, it's millions of years old basically, um, from the Jurassic Coast area. And uh, got a nice, it's a, it's a hamstone, uh, which is limestone. So has no major properties, but um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful stone. It's uh, narrow, narrower this side, but I wanted to give a, a wider face, um, facing the retreat. So yeah, once again, very happy. I have to wait and let this uh, concrete set now for a uh, number of days before I start filling it with, with, with some flower bulbs and seeds and uh, filling it back with it in the soil and raking it. So yeah, can't wait to finish it off. Okay, so here we go. Um, I filled in the soil around the base of the uh, standing stone. Uh, I didn't actually record this when I was uh, putting the bulbs and seeds in there, but there's about 50 or 60, um, I guess maybe, um, daffodil bulbs near the uh, near the standing stone and then around here in the middle way is some snowdrops about a hundred of those circled and then um, on the outside is some purple ones which are smaller so they come out at different times so and then I finished it off with some grass seed but I did pack it down originally and wetted it but because the rain's got in there and I've watered it a little bit I need to put a little bit more soil on so I'll do that but other than that it's almost complete so, um, yeah. Quite happy. Dear Great Spirit, in this light that we have in the center, surrounded by nature, we open up this space for healing, for proof of the afterlife in love and light. Knowing that this stone is here to anchor in the energies of the earth and the cosmos and beyond, allowing us to be the center of, of love and light and all that exists around us. It's, it's recording, it's just a. Thank you. Yeah, don't have to stretch your mouth, just keep it. Uh, just feeling honored and blessed to be part of this initial ceremony to honor this great stone in this lovely. Um, sacred space um, and hoping that all that touch it, view it, will be, will, will be touched and blessed with love and harmony. just want to wish everybody love and light and thank you yes, for taking part in this opening ceremony. God bless everybody. The group energy goes to everyone and helps them with what they need, helps to clear any blockages they have in their chakras and meridians. Mm. Thank you for the large, large stone. I'm grateful that I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> 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 and uh, it helped bring the energy here and we've been blessed with uh, lots of loving people coming to our centre. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say, um, hopefully there's a beacon of light, this big stone, and to be able to sort of like bring who we want to bring here, and let the energy flow, and let it be good. Your birthday girl. Thank you to our son, Ladrin, he's amazing, working hard to create this space. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, 
Watch your seed. Yeah. Watch your seed. Don't kill the seed. Part of the seed now, haven't we? <laughs> so it's currently uh, 18 days ago since uh, we had this installed, as you saw from the video. Um, the grass has grown nicely around the base, um, which is just in time for the approaching colder months. So if I hadn't planted this now and got some grass growing, then this would have continued to be soil. So um, I haven't rushed the process. I've been quite happy with it all. Um, but yeah, it's uh, turned out to be quite a, a beautiful piece. Um, which I'm really happy about. It's, yeah, it's a little bit taller than myself, a few inches, um, which is not too big, not too small. It's a perfect size. And I've got these uh, lovely um, RGB uh, solar panels, uh, lights, which shine up on the, on the stone itself and gives a good effect. So this is the update um, of, update you I'm sure in some time to come but um got a lovely face there on this on the sun uh wider this side uh again limestone and trying to give this really ancient old look so once the grass does catch up in the winter time this should have a nice sort of rustic ancient look where it feels like it's been here for many years and although this is quite new at the moment it will take a few months for all the grass to uh, catch up and um, to blend in. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video and uh, the journey of installing the standing stone. We don't have a name for it, um, don't think there needs to be, it's, it's more about the purpose of it. So if you'd like to come visit our retreat centre, we are based in uh, Bridgewater, outside of Bridgewater, surrounded by nature in Somerset in England. We have been here since 2004 and we have our purposely built a uh, seance room for trance and physical mediumship and the retreat center which has um, beds and spaces for up to 17 people to stay. This is where I do my events, <laughs> my sound and light events, uh, gongs, light machines, breath work, cacao and um, I'm sure in the summertime and well any time of the year we'll be doing some um, sort of you know events with the stone uh, honoring the space and activating this space even more. I don't really like the word ceremony uh, or rituals because that puts um, you know a lot of people off and some people um, so I like to just call these events and, and meetings and gatherings um, but it's it's no you know there's no sort of cult or anything we're going on here it's just something that just flows naturally we do things intuitively and, and work with spirit at the same time and everyone's welcome from all different paths all different faiths believers non-believers um, that my purpose and my desire, my passion, is to give people experiences, whatever that may be, um, through health, through spirituality, uh, through relaxation. So yeah, come visit and um, thank you very much for watching and if you got this far and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care.